Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. During this video, if I reference mechanics from a base class that you are unfamiliar with, there is a link in the description to my 25 base class mechanics video that will provide more information. All right, let's get back into prestige classes, starting with Mystic the Urge. To get this class, you need two points in Knowledge Arcana, two points in Law Religion, the ability to cast second level Divine and Arcane spells and the ability to cast second level divine and arcane spells. This, that means the earliest, okay. Greetings everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with more Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. During this video, if I reference mechanics from a base class that you are unfamiliar with, there's a link in the description to my 25 base class mechanics video that will provide more information. All right, let's get back into prestige classes, starting with Mystic the Urge. To get this class, you need two points in Knowledge Arcana, two points in Lore Religion, and the ability to cast second level Divine and Arcane spells. That means the earliest you can take this class is level seven, because you will need at least three levels in two different classes to clear the requirements. It would probably be best to take two full spellcasters, such as clerics or wizards, so you can get this as quickly as possible. At level one, you get arcane spellcasting and divine spellcasting, which allows your spell levels in both classes to progress while you are leveling in Mystic the Urge. You also get five rankings of combined spells, which allows you to cast spells from one class using the spell book of the other class. I think the mechanics of how this works is confusing if you just read it, so let's look at it in practice. So in this example, I have taken four levels in Wizard, three levels in Cleric, and then I have two levels in Mystic the Urge. When you look at level one of either spell book, it's just gonna look normal to you. Once you go into spell level two, you will see that my wizard spell book has level one cleric spells and my cleric spell book has level one wizard spells. That's how it works all the way up to spell level six. You can cast spells from the other spell book, but they must be one level lower. I have taken abundant casting on this character. And as you can see, when you have spell books from two different classes, that mythic ability would apply to your first spell book. So with Mystic the Urge, I can have a wizard spell book that has cleric spells up to level five and there are extra slots so I can fit everything. Overall, I ranked this class in A. Obviously, being able to combine both arcane and divine spellcasting progression into one character is really cool. The problem is that the combo progression will stop at spell level 5, and then you have to decide what to prioritize. Regardless of what you choose, neither class will reach their max spell level. Mystic the Urge will give you more 4th and 5th level spells than any other class in the game, which is great if you are focusing on buffing and support. A lot of those really critical spells are available before level 5, and you'll be a real boon to your party. But I think this playstyle really hurts your ability to deal damage, and I think most of the people playing this game want their main character to be someone who excels in that regard. So while this class gives you the opportunity to have a really unique and cool playthrough, I cannot rank it higher because it does it in a way that's probably not appealing to most players. Next on the list is Stalwart Defender. To get this class, you need to have Dodge, Toughness, Endurance, Medium or Light Armor Proficiency, and a base attack bonus of 7. There are lots of martial classes who can clear these requirements easily, especially fighters. At level 1, you get your first rank in AC bonus, which will provide a dodge bonus of up to plus 4 to your armor class. Stalwart Defenders is obviously a defensive class, and more AC is always welcome, so this is nice. You also get proficiencies in everything, which sounds nice, but just remember, you don't get this class until level 8, so it's doubtful you've gone that long without a proficiency that your build really needs. Finally, at level 1, you get Defensive Stance. With a free action for a limited number of rounds per day, you can enter a stance that provides a plus 2 bonus to melee attack and damage rolls 
thrown weapon damage rolls and will saving throws. You also gain a plus two dodge bonus to AC and two temporary hit points per hit dice. Remember the dodge bonus is stacked, so this will go on top of the dodge bonuses you already get from the class. While in this position, you cannot move and this ability cannot be used while you are enraged. After the stance ends, you are fatigued for a number of rounds equal to twice the amount of rounds you were in the stance. You cannot enter this stance while fatigued. At level 2, you get your first of five rankings in defensive powers, which expand on what your defensive stance can do. Most of the options here are defensive, like making you immune to frightening and shaking conditions or allow you to use the stance even while fatigued. At level 3, you get Uncanny Dodge, and at level 7, you get Improved Uncanny Dodge, both of which definitely make you more tanky. At level 5, you get your first in three ranks of damage reduction. By the end, you'll have five points of damage reduction, which kind of makes you more tanky, but not in a way that really matters. Finally, at level 9, you'll see it says Improved Uncanny Dodge again. It's supposed to say Mobile Defense, which will let you take a 5-foot step while in defensive stance, but that is not implemented in the game, so this is essentially a dead spot. So basically, this Prestige class gives you three different levels of dips. You have a one-level dip that gives you all proficiencies, one AC, and defensive stance. You could take two more levels to get all of this plus one defensive power and uncanny dodge. Or you can go four levels to pick up all of that along with one more AC point. I rank this class a C because I believe regardless of which level of dips you take, the class is mediocre. In Wrath of the Righteous, the best defense is a great offense. Trying to go full armadillo and just stand around while everybody else handles most of the damage is unnecessary unless you are playing on the hardest difficulties and even then, there are much better ways to play that role. Stalwart Defender just isn't all that great. Quick note before we review Student of War, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you subscribing and hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the community is enjoying and helps my videos spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. All right, last on the list, let's review Student of War. To get this class, you need Dodge, combat expertise, one of the knowledge or lore skill focuses, and a base attack bonus of 5. Just about any class can hear this hurdle, especially one with a high base attack bonus that gets extra feats like one of the fighters. The earliest you can get this class is level 6. At level 1, you get your first of 5 additional class skills. Whether or not this is useful to you, of course, depends on your build and the makeup of your team. You also get Know Your Enemy, which lets you, with a move action, make a knowledge check against one foe. Success grants you an insight bonus of up to plus 3 towards stats in one of 3 stances. The defensive stance gives you a bonus in AC and saving throws, plus at a 6th level, you get a plus 3 bonus to AC against attacks of opportunity. The Martial Stance adds that bonus to attack and damage rolls. Plus at level 6, you get a plus 3 bonus to critical confirmation rolls while in the stance. The Tactical Stance adds that bonus to CMB and CMD. At level 7, you can activate the stance as a swift action instead of a move action. Let's circle back to my thoughts on this after we review the rest of the mechanics. At level 2, you get Mind Over Metal, which allows you to add your Intelligence modifier to AC as opposed to Dexterity. Even though this isn't mentioned in the tooltip, you must use armor or a shield for this ability to trigger. So if you are using a class that has spell casting and wears armor, such as Magus or Blood Rager, then this will definitely be helpful to you. At level 2, you also get your first of 3 ranks in bonus combat feats, which will help to round out your build. At level 3, if you make a successful will save against spell damage, then it will have that spell damage. A lot of the high damage spells don't have will saves, but this still makes you a little more defensive. At level 6, you get the ability to ignore 5 points of enemy damage reduction, as long as it is not untyped and the enemy is not immune to critical hits. A lot of enemies use damage reduction to nullify your attack, so even though the amount is small, this is good to have. At level 9, once per day as a swift action, you can give a weapon the Bane property, which gives it a plus 2 enhancement bonus and it will deal 2d6 more damage. Definitely something nice to use against bosses. 
Finally, at level 10, you get Deadly Blow, which triggers when you use Known Your Enemy and allows you to ignore an enemy's damage reduction and critical hit immunities. I rank this class a D because Know Your Enemy is bugged in two critical ways. First, the bonuses applied to the stances are capped at plus two, even if you reach level seven. That might have been forgivable, but the real issue is that Deadly Blow doesn't actually bypass an enemy's critical hit immunity, even though it says it does. Being able to ignore damage reduction is really nice, but not enough to take 10 levels in this class. The only reason it's not an F is some people might find a use for adding their intelligence modifier to AC, but you have to take two feats that most intelligence builds wouldn't bother with, so I don't really think it's worth it. Bottom line, you should probably avoid this class. That wraps up my rankings for part four of our prestige classes overview. In summary, I rank Mystic Theurge A, Stalwart Defender C, and Student of War D. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.